All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're back in Synology's DSM-7 beta, and this time we're playing with Active Insight for Business, which is a new feature and is really geared toward multiple NAS environments where you need one IT department to be able to manage 50, 100, or even a couple hundred different Synology NASs, all being able to figure out what's going on at all these different sites. And so this is part of Synology's new push to really get into that enterprise market. And overall, I think it's a really great first step. Currently in beta, it's completely free. However, there will be a license fee associated with it that I believe is gonna be month to month after the beta ends in order to get some of the functionality. I believe it will always be free for at least the base functionality, but for extra stuff, that will be paid. Though I've not seen any release on that information, so I'm not quite sure exactly what will be free and what will be paid upgrade for that. So what is Active Insight? Active Insight kind of replaces Synology's CMS or Central Management Service for all Synology NASs. Actually, I don't know if it replaces it, but it kind of extends it. Now what Synology Active Insight does is it basically is a cloud provider where every single Synology is constantly sending data to the cloud and it all gets aggregated into one cloud account where you can really see everything and really be able to see performance trends from all these different sites. And it has so much more data and history than any of the other tools that Synology offers. And it's really geared towards debugging massive solutions and saying, oh, hey, look, that site is constantly filling up their data. They're always running into CPU bottlenecks. Maybe they're running too many virtual machines. Maybe they've got something that's running unnecessarily, or maybe they just need a new NAS and upgrade. I'm sure Synology would love you to figure that out. But overall, I've been pretty impressed by Synology's Active Insight. It works really well, and everything is just really clean. It comes together really quickly, and I think they've done a great job of moving into that enterprise market where these things are incredibly important. They also have an iOS app, and I believe they also have an Android app, though it is only for iPhone. You can get it on iPad, but it's just the scaled version, which is just basically emulates a giant iPhone. And so we'll also be going over that at the end of this video. All right, so now without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into DSM-7 beta, and we're gonna go ahead and check out Active Insight. So as you can see right here, I've already hooked up. So I'm just gonna go into Control Panel, and we're gonna go ahead and enable Active Insight. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go into Synology Account, and we are going to enable Active Insight. It's going to require me to sign in, and so my screen's gonna get a little blurry here. And so I just went ahead and signed in. And so now we've got my Synology account associated with this. And we're also going to be able to enable Active Insight, which means we can go ahead and get started. And so you also have the just overall Active Insight. And then there's also a sub option for performance metric collection. That's actually able to be disabled if it's starting to take up a lot of your bandwidth because it actually does take up a fair amount of resources collecting that data, sending that data, and everything. So if you don't need that kind of level of data, you can toggle it off. All right, so now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and click apply. And we're going to go ahead and check out Synology Active Insight. And it's actually a totally separate web portal, but we can also get to it through here and going into Active Insight. And see, it's gonna take us to this new page where we're also gonna to have to sign in again. And so just like that, I was able to integrate in and we can get a bunch of different information. We can go into warnings and see what they are. So currently there is a warning on this group. So we can figure out why by clicking this button right here. And so we can see right here that an improper shutdown occurred. And so this event, this improper shutdown actually occurred before I even tied this to Active Insight. And so what Synology had done is it actually goes through the logs or any of the other residual information that's already on the NAS and just adds that into Active Insight. So it's actually really great for that. I'm, I'm surprised they do that. Normally it's just, we start collecting data now, but it actually collects previous data that was already available. And so now we can go through and see everything. We can check out the hosts, and we'll also go ahead and dismiss that error. So we stop getting it. So we'll go into events and we will say mark as resolved. And so this is really where you can start seeing that this is designed for the enterprise. This is designed for large groups of IT people who need to be able to investigate this and be able to resolve them and kind of keep it taskless in a way. You can remind you later or you can mark it as resolved and you can start adding groups and things. 
there is a ton of stuff here. And so now we've got it resolved. We can go back in and we will see that there's no longer that warning. We can go into our total hosts and we can see information on it. It would appear here that that is still there, even though that is that event has been properly um, resolved. So that might be a glitch. Ah, it goes away when I reload the page. So sometimes it's not perfect. And sometimes it takes a minute for all the other pages because they've been cached to do it. And now we can start seeing information here. We can add to groups. And so you can have a ton of different groups. You would have a groups that are logically like, okay, let's talk about office NASs versus enterprise NASs. So the ones that are in your data center are going to be different than the ones that are deployed at your offices that are going to be different than the ones that are used for backups. And so you can start really choosing everything and really getting a solid foundation and getting so much data out of it. Just right off the bat, I don't know why they don't have this directly in DSM-7, but this is all the information you need, in my opinion. From a large view over it, you have the CPU load, the RAM load, the incoming and outgoing traffic, the drive IOPS, and the drive throughput. And finally, the storage utilization. That's all you need, and it's so nice that they have this here. I really wish they actually had the ability to add it like right here where you just got all that information exactly like that because it is so nice. We can also go through and get some really in-depth stuff. Everything is really clickable. So now we can see how our volume is being utilized. And so right now I just enabled Active Insight so we don't get all the historic data. But now that it's enabled, we are going to have this historic data for a long time. And so we'll be able to start seeing real trends. We can start seeing, hey, why did all of a sudden the utilization go way up and it's been at like 80% for the past couple weeks? You can look in and try to figure out what has happened and what could be running. You kind of get to put on your investigator hat. They have so much data in here and it's just really impressive. You can really start to debug things that are going on. You have your NFS and your iSCSI LUN ability. So it really is just super dynamic and has so much important information here. We can see different services that are enabled and so you can get the large view of things. We can go into in depth on storage. We can see every single drive, how it's performing, the utilization. You can look at all this information and it trends it long term, which I think is really important. We can also go into events and we can see all the events and you can really do everything. I can't see too much here on if you're able to unmark it, something that's resolved, which I would expect there to be because sometimes, oh wait, that actually did not get resolved or something like that, or somebody just hit something. So I wish they did have a mark as unresolved and give a note. You can also go through and add tickets apparently. I believe that that is part of that pro license though, which is in the subscription model. And so we also have other great features, which are all important. And that's actually profile features. So I can go in to my account settings here and you can actually start changing things. So it's got a bunch of different information here, but we can also go into security. And now you can actually set up two factor authentication directly on this. That means you've got two factor authentication whenever you're trying to see the active insight stuff. And so it's really solid. You can see login histories and a bunch of stuff here. Overall, they've done a really good job with it and it just seems to work really well. Now let's also talk about custom events, which are probably one of the most important things as a service like this. And so under management, you can go in and you can click create custom events. So right now you can basically have anything work. You can say, okay, if the CPU load average for more than five minutes is greater than 10 or 15% warning critical, then we will have an event and you can even have a recommend solution. And basically if that happens, it'll pop up and say, Hey, I know this error happens a lot. This is how you can fix it. And so they've got a ton of information here. They've got disconnection time, CPU utilization, CPU load, memory, network received, network out, your NFS information, your iSCSI information, your usage, your volume IOPS, your volume latency, which can be really important, your SSD cache information. There is so much stuff in here and it is really nice to be able to have this fine grain of control in here. You can even then apply it to only specific hosts. You also have in-depth logs. You have just about everything you would like and the IP address. 
And so you can really tell where everything is and what is going on. And so that's the Active Insight web portal. Let's also go in and check out it on my phone. And so now I'm just gonna go ahead and open up Active Insight on my phone. And I've not signed in before, so I'm gonna hit sign in now. And so just like that, it actually gives a pretty nice, easy overview. It says, hey, everything's okay. And then it also lets you go through and see the basic information on this. You've got really the basic stuff that you need to look at, and you can even see events, resolve things, and check everything out that you need to, which is really nice if you're on the floor working on stuff and trying to see if other stuff happened. It's a great way to be able to check out the current performance and everything you need through there. Honestly, I'm really impressed by how they've done here. This is probably one of their cleanest made apps, I'd say, and it just seems to work really well. And it gives the correct level of information that you need when you're debugging something. I'd say that Active Insight, honestly, is pretty valuable and can really save a ton of headache trying to diagnose all these different tools and can bring everything running. Now that is to say, it's not gonna play nice with anything else. There might be some applications that you can start using to start exporting information out of here and bring it into Zabbix or something, but realistically, this is Synology's one solution for everything. If you're able to go all Synology into your ecosystem, well, this might be absolutely a godsend. But for a lot of larger businesses, it's hard to be able to go all of one brand and not get locked in because you happen to have one feature that this one brand is the only one who can support. And so stuff like that is kind of difficult where you would not be able to monitor something like a QNAP or all these other builds with this service. But if you're a majority Synology, this can be really nice. And overall, I think Active Insight is a great thing. I'm really interested to see what the cost of Synology's Active Insight management subscription is. But as soon as I know that, I'll definitely make a video on that. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this. This was really fun. I'm really excited to see where they take this in future DSM builds. And maybe once I get an extra NAS or two running on here. Go ahead and leave any of the tutorials or Synology DSM things you'd love to see in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.